Hello and welcome to the Healing Clouds po podcast for today. We have with us today Kathleen Shannon. She is a certified reconnective healing practitioner and a certified hypnotherapist. She specializes in past life regression and metaphysical counseling. Her sessions are centered around you realizing your potential and energies and also your life between lives. That's a very interesting concept that she works on. She's also been a former member of the American Board of Hypnotherapy and the International Hypnosis Federation. Hypnosis has been her tool of practice for over two decades, and she's here with us today to share her wisdom and her knowledge. Kathleen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nabil. I'm excited to be here. I'm very honored. Wow. You have... Well, we, we got to have you on the show today. You know, we're honored to actually have you on the show sharing with us all that rich knowledge that you've, you've gathered over the two decades that you've been working with uh, clients. Um, Kathleen, you know, you, you've been a certified hypnotherapist and there are so many questions that I've received about hypnotherapy that I'm going to ask you today, starting with what is hypnosis all about? What's, what's all this buzz about hypnosis and you know, this mind control thing as they, as they portray it. I mean, I just, I just need to understand this in really simple terms. What is hypnosis? <laughs> well, hypnosis is working with another person to do something that we are all quite capable of doing on our own, only people don't realize their own personal power. So people have a very uh, funny outlook on or most people have an interesting outlook on hypnosis because they're both attracted and repelled. And I think the reason they're repelled is the way that the media and movies portray hypnosis as someone taking over your mind. But that is actually quite impossible unless it includes some form of torture or long-term use as in the military training people how to kill another human being or if you're in a situation where you're a prisoner of war and they use different methods to uh, break the spirit. So in my case, I am a holistic healer and I work in a benevolent capacity with the client. I'm all about bringing out the best in a client and um, showing them their own personal power. Um, Milton Erickson is one of the grandfathers of hypnosis, and he believed and has been quoted many times that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. And that means that the client or the patient is allowing the suggestions to, um, to inspire them to change. And the whole reason someone would go to a hypnotherapist is because they're interested in change. They're not happy with their lifestyle or their habits and um, like destructive habits and they want to create healing and health in a quick and easy way. Like everybody wants life to be simple and easy but often it just isn't that way and I believe that's for a reason so we have these um, things happen in our life uh, these challenges and that gives us a wonderful opportunity for growth and learning and um, how to overcome our problems um, so most people live either in the past or the future. They're worried about the future or they're obsessed about the past and, and they have guilt and regret about past actions. And that keeps most people totally out of the now. And where our power lies is in the now. So a hypnotherapist um, may use the concepts of past and future, but my idea of healing and health is to help people to realize that in the now, things aren't near as bad, but the now is where we need to focus our attention to create change. So I believe that with our thoughts and emotions, we create our reality around us. So what's going on in the inside 
manifests on the outside. So if someone is a person who has a negative outlook on life, they're going to attract more negative things happening because with the law of attraction that I help my clients understand, um, you attract more of what your inside feelings and your outward words are saying because it, it lines up. So if, if you're thinking that uh, nobody appreciates you, you're going to bring on more of that. Or if, or if all relationships are doomed, you're going to bring on more of that. So a hypnotherapist's job is to help the client to have a more positive outlook and also to reinforce the changes that they want. Like say, if you have a disease, um, the doctor's going to give you certain regimes that you have to follow, a better diet or a better uh, exercise program. As a hypnotherapist, I can help you to uh, uh, create those changes by accessing your subconscious mind and this is where people get concerned because we're working with the subconscious mind not the conscious mind and in that way I think people are correct in having a little bit of trepidation because the conscious mind does not like change in any way and it'll fight that those changes and that's why the trick is to get to the subconscious mind in a way that the client feels comfortable so you have to have rapport with your client, and um, that's what I try to create. I have a, a a very gentle way of speaking with people and a non-threatening way, and I allow the client to either accept or reject any suggestions that I give to them. So for 99% of the people, when they're in a hypnosis state, which is a just a very relaxed state, they're still conscious of the room around them. They're still conscious of who they are. So it seems so subtle at first that they almost feel like nothing's happening and that they're just making everything up, especially when it comes to uh, things like past life regression or meeting your spirit guides or higher self or life between lives. You feel like you're making it up. But after the session is over and we discuss about it, almost in every s instance, they have come up with something that they never would have dreamed, that they never would have imagined. So that tells me that probably it's true. And then about a week down the road, you get a another perspective where you can look back and see if this does feel real or if it, or if it does feel made up. By then, it's always that they feel, yes, this is a real experience, but you need a little bit of time to look back and, and really feel and, and see the results of it. So I think of a hypnotherapist as like a personal trainer for the brain, the same like you have a personal trainer at the gym for your body. I believe that uh, going into spirit is really the cornerstone of healing because since we create our outer reality uh, with our thoughts, we can we actually allow in disease and problems um, by our attitudes. So we want to have a good attitude about life to attract more good things to our life. Uh, an attitude of gratitude will bring more wonderful things to your life. Wow, thank you so much for those insights, Kathleen. For the, the long answer. <laughs> Well, that was filled with a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, really interesting points. Like I did pick up a couple of points which were uh, really interesting. Like uh, a hypnotherapist can help you to inspire, to be inspired to achieve goals. Somebody who works as a, as a in like a personal trainer at the gym, but a personal trainer for the brain. Um, what I would also like to understand is when when a person is hypnotized or in a state, state of trance, as you call it, is he or she fully aware of his surroundings, of his or her environment, or is he completely under the control of a hypnotherapist? Because that is a big question that almost all of us have. So could you just throw some light on that? Sure, that's a great question. Um, the 
the way that hypnotherapy works is allowing your body to become completely relaxed and still and silent, which is so similar to meditation. So you're kind of allowing the body to go to sleep. When I am fully immersed in the sacred trance, I don't feel my body at all. I just feel like a floating head. And I might, if my eyes are closed, I might see some swirling lights or once in a while I'll see a big eyeball, believe it or not. I'm not the only one that, that sees that. And I, I believe it's like God looking at back at ourselves, the God that's inside of us and all around us. So hypnotherapy is just a way for someone to help you feel super relaxed because when you're relaxed and you're re letting go of the conscious mind by feeling sleepy and that in that in-between stage between sleep and awake, that's called the hypnagogic line. And this is where you want to allow your client and the client to allow themselves to be. So you, you will most likely be aware of the couch and, and the office around you and the person speaking to you, but your point of focus is inward. So you're going, the client is going into their inner universe, connecting with the inner being um, that the Hindus call the Atma, the inner spirit, and it's reconnecting to your true self because your ego is not your true self. Your ego will fall away when you die. So in a way, hypnosis is kind of like dying before you die because you connect with that higher self um, that has a broader perspective and that has a a bigger knowledge of like all your lives together and all the dimensions together. So at first there's a little bit of a learning curve. Um, my instructor at Orange Coast College um, compared it to maybe learning how to play tennis or learning ballroom dancing, something that's a little bit complicated but gets easy very quickly over time, over practice. So many times people have been able to do past life regression with me on the first try, but if not, I encourage them to keep trying either to come back to me or try another therapist, but eventually you will get it. And a lot of hypnotherapists are like myself in that we were not able to do it right away and that and that but that's really what got us hooked because we wanted to be able to do it so we stuck with it we took the training and then you know finally we figured out oh it was there all along I just didn't trust it I didn't believe it was really happening but it was happening it's just like so subtle and then the other thing about taking a over your brain is there's thing, something called a som somnambulist and they're a person that completely gets focused on the inner world so strongly that they don't even, they're not even aware of, of the environment around them and when you bring them back to the physical, they don't remember. But that's less than 2% of the population. But those people have the advantage that when you give them a suggestion for healing and health, they really heal. They take to it like a duck to water. So each one is, you know, each type of client has their own advantages and disadvantages. And some people are really into controlling their environment and, and anybody they come in contact with. So they're a little bit more difficult or people who are super nervous and it's hard for them to relax but I think every single person is capable of this if only they would not give up and they, they just keep trying again and again, either going to seminars or more different hypnotherapists or using the same hypnotherapist to get used to that person and trusting that person. That's what I'm hoping for is that I can continue to work with those people. And I've had people come back as many as 10 or 15 times and they get incredible value and they're healed of their of their not just their symptoms but of their illness and i have many um testi testimonials to this effect that's very interesting kathleen and thank you so much for sharing that with us so you know you did you did uh, address a couple of important points wherein how 
does hypnotherapy actually work on on multiple dimensions? Uh, that would also mean that you know hypnotherapy can be used to work on emotional and mental conditions of of, of human existence. Um, when 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 you you know, when we talk about emotional and mental conditions, can you kind of help us understand the science behind how does hypnotherapy work on emotions? Well, your emotions can last, uh, your emotions create the mood, and the mood can last for anything up to an hour to, to the whole day. So when you think about your thoughts, your thoughts create your emotions, your emotions create your mood. So in this progression, you are only a thought away from a better mood. So you need to realize that your thoughts, which come in randomly, you can just get a random thought. Are you going to allow yourself to attach to that thought and start a downward, downward spiral? <clears throat> are you going to choose a better thought, uh, one of gratitude or blessings uh, to create an upward spiral? Once you start on a spiral uh, and, and it gains momentum, it can be difficult to, to change the direction. And so in that way, if you learn uh, some self-healing techniques like closing your eyes, doing some deep breathing, counting from 10 down to 1, ways to soothe yourself about the situation, those are very, very helpful. So let me think what else. Did I miss something of your questions? Uh, emotional, mental issues. Uh, so when we're working with uh, hypnotherapy, we might uh, talk about a certain emotion that keeps coming up, a pattern. So that's what we look for in hypnotherapy. We look for a pattern of behavior or um, situations that arise that mimic each other all through their lives, a pattern. And we see what emotions are attached to them. And then we, um, we work on releasing those emotions. Uh, and we do that by relaxing the body and with each breath, allowing the uh, tension and the anxiety to leave uh, out the fingertips, out the toes, at the top of the head, with each cleansing breath, just allowing those to go out, and then replacing those emotions with self-love, with connection to God, with um, appreciating the good things you have in your life. So it's, I really believe that everybody can be happy if only they change their perspective. So with hypnotherapy, I really try to help people gain a, a better perspective on their life. Got it. So thank you for actually walking us through how hypnotherapy works on different aspects of emotions. And that's, you know, that's a really important concept for all of us to know that hypnotherapy, first of all, it's not mind control. It's basically going into a very high alertive, alerted state and empowering your subconscious mind to address a, a particular issue that you're working with or that you're working on with your with your hypnotherapist. So that's that's pretty interesting. Um, Kathleen, what what I what this also kind of takes me to is the whole idea about you know there's this really hot topic which is about ancestral or family lineage issues uh that's been cropping up a lot in the, in the recent times and uh, we've seen a lot of interest being generated around this so can you just kind of help us understand the link between hypnotherapy and addressing these issues that arise due to ancestral or family family lineage okay well um once again uh, we are not our bodies, we are not our egos, we are not our families. We actually are spirit that um, our true lives are in the other higher dimensions. And we have agreed to come to planet Earth in a much denser um, 
dimension in order to receive the challenges and opportunities for growth. Because in our true home, which you can call heaven or paradise, uh, you don't have these challenges. You can instantly manifest whatever it is you need. You don't need money. You don't have these health issues. So we agree to come here for a reason because we want to um, just understand how, uh, on the leading edge of reality how we can manifest in in partnership with time and studying the works of Eckhart Tolle, I do accept the belief that if we are not enlightened, we are basically insane in the, in the way that we're living through our pain body. We're living with the accumulation of all the hurts that we have collected through our lifetime. And how do you overcome that? That's what I help clients to do. And I am working on myself at, at the same time. I've been work The reason I am a healer today is because I needed to do self-healing myself. And at the same time, I wanted to learn how to help others. I was inspired because of my suffering to help others who have suffered. And I think a lot of healers go this route. And maybe this is the challenge of illness in a lot of people when they've healed themselves, they, they realize they are the true healers. But most of us are looking outside of ourselves. So back to the idea of lineage and ancestry and choosing your own parents. Um, I believe that your ancestry and your lineage is just another distraction. And, and people don't like to hear this. They are so invested in their families and their ancestry and their lineage. And they're sending in their blood to get tested to see where they their ancestors came from. It's just another distraction from the work that we all need to do, which is to simply go to the universe within. You don't have to travel to India and find a guru. You can do this on your own in your own home. I do suggest that people read about these subjects, study these subjects, because this is why we're here. The physical plane is like a schoolhouse. So I help my clients to understand that all of these things around us, the, the, the ball games, the political goings on, uh, they're all just distractions. But we do need to have an ego first. We need to become somebody before we uh, become a nobody. And when you're a nobody and you're a no thing, wow, listen to that thunder, the storm is breaking. Um, when you when you are nobody or nothing, when you allow yourself to let go of your ego, this is where God steps in, your atma, your inner being. So first you become a somebody. You have your family. They teach you how to survive in the world. You build your ego. But then you surrender it. You let it go and you let God come forth and then understand what love is what compassion is what and how to help your fellow man it's like this whole process it's like when you grow up as a child you're learning all this stuff and then you have to unlearn this to learn some new things so it's like this long long process and it's actually quite exciting but it's so confusing and complex at the same time and people just feel lost and they want to find answers but I want you to know that there's no mistakes and also that you don't ever get it done. So it's just a long evolution. We've all lived thousands of lives. We can spend all day looking at our past lives and this and that, but really it's just another distraction. We need to live in the now. We need to go within. We need to meditate and find out our true self, which is the God that created us. And we can merge and allow this God to come forth. But God does not take over our lives unless we surrender and ask for that to happen, to, to let the angels and God and, and all these metaphysical concepts to come forth. Because we do have 
the freedom to choose and to create our own reality. If we want to go south, we want to, uh, you know, become criminals or murderers, or we have the free will to do that here. Nobody's stopping you. But if you decide you want to be a compassionate person, a loving person, and this is your legacy that you're going to give your children, that you were a wonderful mom and you were helpful to your neighbors, you have to look, what are you going to, what, what are your last days on earth going to reveal to you about your life? What kind of person do you want to become, to be? Uh, we're, it's like we're just actors on a stage. So what part do you want to play? Do you want to play the good guy or the bad guy or just the neutral guy, the political guy, the sportsman, whatever? So it's really up to us. And that's a very, very exciting thing. We, we're not locked into this little box of our ancestry and our lineage and our parents and our, you know, we, we have the freedom really to choose our path, our own path. And Nabil, I'm not hearing you anymore. Did we lose each other? No, I'm here. I just thought you were okay. taking a pause. Cool. So I just wanted to make sure that you finished. No, I'm letting you actually speak because I'm so long-winded. I do apologize. No, no, that's cool because we we're, we need content coming in, so we'll edit it out. So I'm going to pick it up from where you just stopped, all right? Cool. All right, Kathleen, that was actually very insightful. Um, yes, a little confusing, but a, a, a very insightful resource, a very re insightful answer. And I'm sure that's where certified hypnotherapists will come into the picture. And I would emphasize that, you know, I'll listen to, to our listeners that when you reach out to hypnotherapists uh, in person or online, just make sure they're certified, just like the ones that we have on Healing Clouds and like Kathleen, who's been there for about 20 years doing this. So, I mean, that's exactly what would we kind of, would we need. Um, you know, people just like Kathleen helping us understand the purpose, understanding our issues, understanding what we need to do in order to get where we want to be. Um, on those lines, Kathleen, I'm sure hypnosis, like you've walked us through the entire process of what is hypnosis? How does it impact your emotional and mental issues and how can it be used to address those issues? You also kind of walked us through how hypnosis is used for ancestral and lineage uh, issues and, and conditions. Um, that kind of brings me to a very vast, a very open topic, which is about personal and spiritual growth. So how can we use the principles of hypnosis or how can hypnotherapy be used to grow personally and spiritually? Well, first of all, you have to be very careful with your clients because they come in with very strong beliefs of their own. So you have to allow the client to have their own opinions about God and religion and lineage, ancestry, all of it, past lives. So I always have someone fill out a history of like their beliefs and, and what their goals are. Um, so I kind of get an idea before we start because it's people are very touchy about their spirituality and their religions and they are fearful of the uh, hypnotherapist taking over their minds, you know, and trying to change your mind. So it's safest for me to just take people to their higher self and have a conversation with their higher self. Because then... I think, and, I mean, and, uh, uh, I think, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. Your voice is cutting out. Okay. Uh, I think we're losing internet at your end because you, you, were, you were absolutely fine until the last couple of sentences that you just said. Okay. But it absolutely went bad. Um, right. We'd have to redo the last part. So the last clear um, recording was up until the fact when you said that uh, when somebody comes to you, you kind of already know what that person needs or wants from you. But then after that, it got bad. So do you want to do it again? 
Okay, unless you want to reschedule because the storm is really coming down now. I don't know if that has something to do with it, but um, you sound um, okay on my well, We've end. done like, this is just like the, the, we're almost done with the fourth question. And then we just have okay. one more question, which is your three advices to listeners. And then I just close it. So we're pretty much done with about 70% of the, of the podcast. So might as well just push it and finish it. And then we can okay. do if this if the recording doesn't turn out to be good, we'll redo another one in the in the coming week or so. Okay. All right. So, so how hypnosis works is that I help the client really relax with the uh, induction. So I ask the client to relax different parts of their body and to imagine like floating in a warm pool uh, or uh, climbing up to a higher self or going to the heart within. I have many, many inductions, but basically it's just to relax the person. Um, but I'm careful of, I don't want to step on somebody's toes about their beliefs and their, in their religion and their spirituality. So I try to keep it general, but basically my, um, I get the best results when I allow the client to connect with higher self so that they have a conversation, a two-way conversation with their higher self. So like they're speaking to their higher self, their higher self is speaking through their lips back to them so I can record everything. Um, and that way we keep truth. So if like, if, for instance, if they're going into past lives, um, I'm not telling them what their past life was like psychics do. They are seeing their own past life and they are having the experience of either seeing pictures or auditory or just feelings of what that past life was. So the experience is subjective for them and very real for them. It's like I, I am careful not to feed them information, but I do share my research over many, many years on all kinds of these subjects, life between lives, um, mediumship, where they connect with spirits on the other side. That's where I get a lot of the information. What is life after life? What, what, what is heaven? What, what, do you, what do people do there? What, what goes on, you know, and the whole fact about choosing your own parents, you know, I can say to the clients, did you choose your own parents? And, and the answer is always yes, when they're in a higher self. I mean, it's just, it's like a given. But the, the newcomer to hypno, hypnotherapy has to be taken slowly through these steps or you just blow them out of the water, see? So, so you have to allow the client to have an exchange with you like they're they're telling you their ideas and I'm giving them my it's like an exchange it's not like I'm forcing them to take my opinions and vice versa you know it's like an exchange same as when I do the energy healing it's an exchange of energy it's an exchange of ideas I just try to help the client have a better perspective to improve their health Wow, that was that was a great response, Kathleen. Thank you so much for actually helping us understand how can you actually work on yourself once you're on your higher plane, and how does that impact you and your decisions? Okay. You know, uh, this has actually been one of the most insightful sessions we've had in terms of a podcast, and I'm really glad we were able to connect, Kathleen. Uh, as an advice, you know, you come with over two decades of experience. You've worked with countless clients. You've helped a lot of people for a wide range of issues. What would be those three top agendas or three top advices that you would have for people to, you know, for our listeners for about hypnosis? Okay, well, probably the number one thing people come to me about is anxiety. So anxiety is mainly... Uh, concern about the future you know you're thinking of the worst case scenario the what ifs you know if I don't get this job or if I don't make enough money or if my lover leaves me or if my if I get the divorce and it's always concern about the future so I try to help them understand that the future is just an illusion what they need to live in is the now and I ask them as of this moment right now do you have a problem? And 
because you have to stay in the now to have your power. If you're obsessed with the future and worrying about the future, you're only going to bring the things that you don't want unless you're thinking about the future in a positive way. So you can manifest the future that you want by thinking about the things that you want as if they have already happened and you have the emotion of excitement and fulfillment and gratitude as if it has already happened. That is the key to manifesting your future uh, the way that you want. So in the anxiety arena, you have to learn, and I will I teach my clients basically how to soothe themselves. So when you get a a, a a diagnosis, a health diagnosis that you don't want, say with diabetes or heart condition, most people panic and they have a, a big learning curve of, of new behaviors or new medications that they have to take, new behaviors that they have to accept with diet and exercise, things like this. So I help them to manage those new behaviors, but also to be grateful for the things that you do have. So, okay, if you got a bad diagnosis of something, you you take your thoughts off of that. You 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 express gratitude for your life in other ways, like um, you know, if you have a beautiful house, or if you have a beautiful marriage, you have beautiful children, or or you just enjoy your environment. You go to the ocean, you go to the mountains, and just enjoy nature. This is the way you soothe yourself where you, you do the self-hypnosis with counting yourself down and, and relaxing your body and just being in the now, not worrying about next week, next month, next year. Those are illusions and they're illusions to distract you. Same with your past. Okay, you can sit there all day long and beat yourself up because of your lifestyle has created your disease, but that's not going to be helpful. So you just have to cut off your thoughts to the past as Eckhart Tolle says you must die to your past at every moment you 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 just let those go i know it's so hard and it's a daily challenge to not think about the past with any kind of guilt or shame or or hatred revenge all those feelings coming from the past because you've been hurt so what you do is you bless those who have hurt you or you don't feel so good about. You bless yourselves. You, um, you, when you bless the things that hurt you, and forgiveness, you forgive those that have hurt you and you forgive yourself for the hurt that you've given to others. When you do that, it releases those toxins in your body and you can relax. And this is a daily exercise. It's it's truly not easy, but it is doable. It's manageable. Same with pain. Pain is manageable. And I help clients how to manage pain with their minds, not with, with pills and medication and all this stuff, because those pill pain pills can be hard on your organs. So the mind is so powerful. Um, the mind is a wonderful tool, but if you don't pay attention to your behaviors and your thoughts, the mind can actually take over the body in a detrimental way. So that's how I help people with their perspective, their attitude, their thoughts, how to manage their thoughts and emotions and moods. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. That was really great. So, guys, that's how you need to incorporate hypnosis. So that's how, basically, Kathleen, as a hypnotherapist, can help you to become a much more, you know, a better version of yourself. Awareness, self-awareness. Self-awareness, that's what we're all about. Yeah. Wow. Great session a lot of information and a lot of, lot of learning. That was simply amazing, Kathleen. Thank you so much, Nabil. I so appreciate this opportunity to share with you and share with our seekers that come to Healing Clouds to learn more. 
you most welcome, Kathleen, and it was we really glad to have you on board today on 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 this podcast and with our team as well. So, guys, that was Kathleen Shannon explaining to us all about hypnosis and how can we work on multiple dimensions in order to grow both personally and spiritually with hypnotherapy. If you would like to connect with Kathleen, please visit her profile on Healing Clouds and you can book a free consultation with her or you can even book a session to start your holistic healthcare journey. You know what's better? She's offering discounted packages where you could book multiple sessions with her and start off your journey in hypnotherapy. So that was Kathleen Shannon for us, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Nabil signing out for Healing Clouds podcast for today. Adios. Have a great day. Bye-bye.